Okay, so now this is really cool. What we're gonna do now is we're going to talk about Grignard reactions. We're still uh, making alcohols. Yeah, we're still making alcohols, okay? <clears throat> I, I just had to stop and think about that for a second. Still making alcohols, uh, but we're gonna do it in a different way. Before I, I get into that, let me go back over to my whiteboard and point something out. What we did in previous sections was, let me go to red. We took uh, carbonyl compounds, right? And we effectively took hydrides, right? That wasn't exactly what we were doing. We were taking lithium aluminum hydride that were carriers of, of things like that. It was really like this, right? Right? That's what was really going on, but it effectively was like this. I agree. And we were uh, making that. There's the new hydrogen. Agreed. Okay. And then we were protonating that with a solvent molecule. Boom. Boom. And we were making an alcohol, right? Where that is this hydrogen, which is this hydrogen, right? And this comes from the water molecule. Okay, that's what we were doing before. In section third, ah, does not, my pen does not like the top of the screen here. Adjust me here, pen, 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 pen. Pen does not like the top of the screen. So let's go here and say, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so what we were doing before, and then that was section, sorry, just a minute here. Okay, I'm not sure. I'm really sorry. I'm, I'm having trouble here with this. Um, hmm. I really don't want to start this video over again, so if you don't mind, I'm just going to do that. Okay. So this was in section 13.4. Remember that? All right. So what we are going to do now is we're going to talk about doing it with a carbon. Right? And you're saying, what? What are you talking about? We don't ever see a carbon with a lone pair of electrons, right? That's the main point of Grignard. Okay, now let's go back to the PowerPoint. That's the main point of this. Big deal, and it is a big deal. We're gonna have, a, we introduce a lot of um, synthetic power when we introduce this reaction. So Grignard reagents, are often used uh, in the synthesis of alcohols. Okay, great. To, again, we're still talking about the synthesis of alcohols. We're in chapter 13, alcohols and, and ethers. So to form a Grignard, um, we, we do this, All right? So what is a Grignard? Well, a Grignard is we take an alkyl halide, which is just, I don't know, shoot, you know, it could be methyl bromide, right? And we treat it with magnesium metal, and we get this monster, right? So this is this would be the bromide, right? That's this right here. Here's my methyl. Methyl. Okay. So this is how we make a Grignard reagent. You don't need to know the mechanism for this. All right. So an example of it is simply taking propyl chloride right or one chloropropane one chloropropane or propyl chloride same thing treating with magnesium and getting this monster right and now all of a sudden we effectively have this is the same thing as boom boom with a lone pair of electrons on there sorry my pen I gotta work with this pen a little more all right so it's effectively can you see one two three carbons this is one two three carbons okay or in another example would be taking um, bromobenzene and treating with magnesium and we, we, we get this then right okay so how does the oxidation state of the carbon change 
upon forming the green yard? That's a good question, which I'm not going to answer for you. All right. So this is how you make green yard reagents, and it is, is effectively like making a carbon with a lone pair of electrons. Now this is the nucleophile. And we're going to do the same kind of nucleophilic reactions that we've done before. All right. So the electronegativity difference between the two, here's the reason why it's like that, is because it's such a big electronegativity difference, 2.5 to 1.3. So this carbon feels like it's got a lone pair of electrons on there. Okay, can you see my lone pair here? All right, the carbon atom is not able to effectively stabilize the negative charge it carries, and so consequently it's gonna act as one of these guys down here. Is it gonna act as an acid? What's an acid do? Donates protons? Is it gonna act as a base? It takes protons. It's not gonna be an acid, right? Electrophile? No, it's an electron donator. It's not, it's not going to be a lover of electrons. Nucleophile? Yes. Okay, so now let's look at some nucleophilic reactions. So now we effectively have a lone pair of electrons on a carbon. That comes in just like you saw before and attacks a trigonal planar carbon. These electrons go up there. I think I was using blue before. Right? Boom. These electrons come up here and make an alkoxide. So there's my new R, right? There's the new one. And I now have an alkoxide. After I get my alkoxide, then I can introduce water, right? And this is going to come over here, steal the proton. This guy goes off as hydroxide. And there's my new hydrogen, right? So I now have made my alcohol. But now I went from having two alkyl groups on here to three. And that's the difference between Grignard and using lithium aluminum hydride. But the, but the similarities are, I, I hope, uh, uh, dramatic, right? They're very much the same mechanism, except we're not bringing in a hydrogen now. We're bringing in a carbon or an alkyl group. All right, so the Grignard's an extremely strong base. And here's the reason why. Uh, it's taking... Uh, a proton from water, right? Look at that. There's my water molecule with a pKa of 16, okay? And it's taking the proton from it. And we know that a carbon-hydrogen bond, right, an alkyl group essentially has a carbon here, right? The pKa of a carbon-hydrogen bond is about 50. We saw if that were uh, sp2 or sp3, it'd be 45 to 50. If it were sp2, uh, it would be 40 to 45, right? So it's about 50. Look at that. Which of these is a better acid? Well, shoot, water is a better acid. This is so much better of an acid that it's effectively not going to go backwards. Not going to happen because of the difference in these pKa's. Okay? So, if water cannot be used as a solvent, what should be used as a solvent? That's a good question. What solvent can be used? We showed here why water cannot be used. Can alcohol be used? Ah, the pKa is going to answer that for us. Okay? All right. So here's some examples. If we take a methyl Grignard reagent, if we take a methyl Grignard reagent, looking at my notes here, pardon me, Okay. If we take a methyl Grignard reagent, then this, again, when I'm, when I'm doing this in my mind, I'm going to draw a lone pair of electrons here, put a minus on it, pretend like this is all that's going on here. That's going to come in here, boom, right? That's step one. And then step two is going to be to protonate that oxygen. That's step two, to protonate it. And wham, we have a new methyl group on there, right? And that's how we make that. Now, if you have an, um, if you have a, an ester here, you have to use extra. This is really going to be two times this, right? Because two methyl groups are going to come in. And I th suggest, actually, I think, it's, I say here propose a mechanism, but I, th I think uh, Klein shows you the mechanism for this in there. You should draw the mechanism out, out there. If you have the spirit for it, you need to practice this. If you practice it, you'll learn it better. Okay? That's what you need to do. List some functional groups that are not compatible 
with the Grin Yard and try to um, try to say why. What are some functional groups that are not compatible? And I'll give you a hint. It has to do with PKAs, right? I.e., Grin Yards are very strong bases. So if something has a, an H plus it can take, it's going to take it. All right, so now design a synthesis for the following molecules, starting from an alkyl halide and a carbonyl, each having five carbons or less. Do you know what this means? This means plus an antimer. Where's my pen here? That means plus the enantiomer. Design a synthesis for the following molecule, starting from an alkyl halide and a carbonyl, each having five carbons or less. I think I'm not going to do this on the video. I think I'm going to let you do it personally. And you know, you have a hint here, right? You know, I will give you a hint. Uh, you're told here, design a synthesis, where's my pen? You're told that you have a carbonyl, and this comes from the carbonyl, right? So watch this, one, two, three, four, five, and one, two, three, four, five. Okay, so it's possible that this is the new bond that got made via the Grignard. Can you see that? One, two, three, four, five. Aha, it's possible that's the new bond that got made via the Grignard. Okay, I know that's a big hint. But um, hopefully that's, that's uh, not, not too much to, to take away the, 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 uh, the practice that you need. Okay, good luck.